I call on government order of the day number one. Vulnerable Children Bill, first reading. Honourable Paula Bennett. Uh, Mr Speaker, I move that the Vulnerable Children Bill be now read a first time. I nominate the Social Services Committee to consider the bill. Mr Speaker, I'm going to speak quickly. Um, as there is a lot of detail I'd like to get through, and I know that would be a surprise to everyone. Uh, this omnibus bill proposes two new acts, the Vulnerable Children Act and the Child Harm Prevention Orders Act. It also amends the Children, Young Persons and Their Families Act 1989 and the Kiwi Saver Act 2006, and makes consequential amendments to a number of other acts. This bill is about protecting vulnerable children and putting that priority ahead of the needs of adults. These changes are bold and by their nature controversial. This work has been driven not just by my order, own... Order, order. But... Could me Sorry to interrupt the honourable oh. member. Would members leaving the chamber please do so quietly and show some courtesy to the member who is trying to address us? Thank the you, Honourable Mr. Speaker. Paula Bennett. These changes are bold by their nature and by their nature controversial. This work has been driven not just by my own and this government's passion to better protect children, but also the determination of the New Zealand public to address this country's horrific record of child abuse. I hope opposition parties will at least support this bill to select committees so that it can be heard there. I can hand on heart say I have not played party politics with this work, and I believe it's one of those that is above politics. Every year, child, youth and family substantial substantiates 22,000 cases of physical, sexual, emotional abuse and neglect. We've already introduced significant changes that are making a difference, and there's an enormous amount of work underway for the Children's Action Plan. For me personally, the most important work I will ever do as a minister is contained in the Children's Action Plan. Firstly, the bill aims to make government agencies jointly accountable to a responsible minister for producing, reviewing and reporting on a touch of vulnerable children's plan. The measure can combine order, with clear order. child protection Courtesy policies. is contagious. Can I look into the members on my right? will help ensure frontline staff take responsibility for keeping children safe from abuse and neglect. The bill also introduces measures to protect children from adults who may harm them. Finally, it addresses how we can better respond to those children who have already been harmed and are in the care of the state. The legislative program will ensure changes are enduring. The bill introduces a new requirement for certain chief executives to collectively develop and report on a vulnerable children's plan. That plan must set out how these agencies will work together towards collectively achieving the government's priorities for vulnerable children. CEs will have to report annually on that plan and answer to the responsible minister on whether or the extent to which each agency has implemented the plan for these children. The plan will be made public. Do not underestimate the power of this unprecedented move. Never before in this country have the chief executives of health, education, police and justice had this specific accountability for vulnerable children. Now they will, alongside the Ministry of Social Development, of course. It will significantly change the way that they work. These five agencies, as well as Te Pune Kaukere and the Ministry of Business, Innovation and Employment, are well, all well represented on the Vulnerable Children's Board. That board is an important part in the accountability chain, leading from the children's teams on working on the ground up to a ministerial oversight group. To support better identification and reporting of child abuse and neglect, this bill requires clear child protection policies to be introduced. Speci specified government organisations, including district health boards, boards of trustees of state, integrated state schools and partnership schools, must have child protection policies. The bill also requires these agencies providing children's services, as well as those they contract or fund, to adopt policies on identifying and reporting child abuse and neglect. Too often individuals and organisations know of abuse but do not take the required action. There will no longer be justifiable excuses. 
I now turn to screening and vetting of what we call a children's workforce. Although many organisations have checks in place to ensure that unsuitable people do not work with children, there is no consistent approach and there are a number of gaps. The Bill will introduce a rigorous approach to vetting and screening with new standard safety checks of the children's workforce in New Zealand. This approach will reduce the risk of children being harmed by those who are entrusted to look after them and to work around them. The legislative scope of the standard safety check regime focuses first on paid employees within the government sector and the services that they fund. Beyond that, it provides voluntary guidance for all other organisations to encourage sound practices in safety checking. The bill will specify the minimum checks that must be conducted and further detail will be outlined in regulations and guidelines. A workforce restriction will be based on a list of qualifying offences to prevent known child abusers and offenders from having control of or working alone with children. The workforce restriction will apply to the same category of organisations as the requirement to conduct state standard safety checks. There are cases where children have been abused because a dangerous individual got close enough to do so, sometimes literally by moving into their home. We will not tolerate abusive adults having that freedom and that power over children. New Zealanders are sick of known abusers repeatedly hurting more children. It's time to put those children first. So this bill introduces civil orders to be made against those who pose a high risk of abusing or neglecting children in the future. These orders will be called the Child Harm Prevention Orders, and I want to acknowledge um, the Honourable Judith Collins for the work that her and her department did in pulling this together. These orders will apply where a person has been convicted of or found on the balance of probabilities to have committed a qualifying offence. Only three individuals can make an application for a child harm prevention order. They are the CEs of Corrections or MSD and the Commissioner of Police. The High Court or the District Court must be satisfied that the person poses a high risk of causing serious harm to a child or children in the future to, or in order to place these restrictions. Those restrictions will be proportionate with the level of risk they pose. Restrictions may apply apply to a specific child or home or to loitering in parks and other areas where children may be. The duration of the order will be for the period necessary to provide the required degree of protection <coughs> to children up to a maximum of 10 years. Because these orders are new, we've put new checks in place as well. They will be reviewed once every 12 months by a panel to determine the continuing justification for the order and the terms imposed. The CE of the monitoring agency and the person subject to the order can apply for a review at any time, and the court must also review the order every three years. Child harm prevention orders will better protect children from abusers. Cabinet thought long and hard about these orders, cognizant of the trade-off between individual freedoms and preventing potential abuse of children. Unapologetically, we've come down on the side of children. To improve the lives of our most vulnerable children who have suffered abuse or neglect, this bill amends, um, includes amendments to the Child, Young Persons and Their Families Act too. Clarify the intention of Principle 13A, that children and young persons must be protected from harm, their rights upheld and their welfare promoted. Strengthen family group conferences and court plans so parental obligations include steps to be taken before a child placed out of the home can be returned to a parent's care, as well as definite decision timeframes about a child's future. Allow external FGC coordinators to be appointed. Include new guardianship provisions to increase stability for children with Home for Life caregivers. Include an obligation on the CE of MSD to provide specific types of financial assistance to the permanent caregiver of a child or young person. Establish a family court review um, to an appeal process for, for permanent caregivers who consider the CE of MSD has wrongly or unreasonably declined financial assistance. Um, and to provide more support for those um, young people People aged 15 right through to 20 years. And that's very important, Mr Speaker, because we see too many of them going out on their own when they're 17 and it's too young for some and just not right. Um, the financial backing will really will help these young people. Safety of subsequent children. There are significant risks to children born into the care of parents who have already had children permanently removed from or die in their care due to abuse or neglect. 
Currently, when those abusive parents have subsequent child come to the attention of CYF, the child's safety is assessed. Um, then the CYF believe the child is unsafe, they take it to court to prove it. We will reverse that burden of proof. There is hope that person can prove that they have changed, but they will have to show that they've taken steps which mean they are lo no longer unsafe and they actually can look after a child and that child's needs will be put first. It's unfortunate but necessary if we are truly to protect those children that are coming along and we know that past behaviour is an indicator of future behaviour, Mr Speaker, and absolutely important. Oh, it's an un <laughs> that was a lot, and very quickly. It's an unfortunate reality that these changes are necessary. Mm, something like that. But this legislation will make a fundamental difference to protecting the most vulnerable children and allowing them to thrive. We're doing everything we can for New Zealand's most vulnerable children, and these changes complement the work we're we'll underway. Mr Speaker, I move that the Social Services Committee consider the vulnerable children's bill. The question is that the motion be agreed to. It's a race through that one. <laughs> I call the honourable member.